It is a spiritual thing where they actually eat the other tribes deceased after a war or an intertribal conflict. Down in my cellar. Police were forced to open Down fire on a cellar. naked man who refused to stop chewing the face off of another man. There's only one mistake I made. Uh-oh. Mm. I told it to my wife. Now everybody wants a key to my cellar. <laughs> <sighs> Tastes like pork. Maybe veal welcome ladies and gentlemen to the cannibal iceberg at first i thought you know cannibalism is crazy enough how more in depth could you go on such a subject it's just gonna be base level things that people would assume about cannibals i mean it's eating humans sounds basic i was wrong doing research for these subjects made my stomach churn and my eyes water made my mouth water that's a joke i'm not into eating humans Above the age of 10. Joking. Joking. Alright, the first item we have on this list is a strange name. Foot taco. It's exactly what it sounds like. I'm not gonna sugarcoat it. The taco is a staple of Tex-Mex cuisine. How would you like your taco? Chicken? Beef? Pork? Throw human feet into the mix and you have our first item on the list. Pretty exciting, isn't it? Oh, oh, I just knew it. I knew it. it was delicious. I wouldn't blame you for clicking off the video, but if you're still interested, autosarcophagy, a fancy term for, well, eating yourself. I don't know to which extent you could do this and still live. You may have to get a bit crafty. Imagine being on a boat and you are forced to bear the brunt of a tropical storm. Suddenly you are thrown from your vessel and instinctively pull your emergency life jacket. You black out as you struggle to keep your head above water. After a short while you awake on what seems to be a deserted island. You wander for hours into the jungle, delirious, hot, sweaty, and overwhelmingly exhausted. Then you hear the primal screech of a human voice and several others follow you. You turn and observe a pack of half-naked humans covered in piercings and they carry spears and sharp daggers. In a panic, you head in the opposite direction, but there is no use. In your futile effort, you trip and fall. With headhunters closing in, all you can do is beg for mercy. They aren't interested. They lash and grab as you try to fight. They hold you down and begin to sever your head from the rest of your body. They keep this as their trophy. Your limbs will be butchered for tonight's dinner. You will be the main course set to be devoured in a Stone Age-like ritual. You having fun yet? Agori, the Indian cannibal monk tribe devoted to the Hindu god Shiva. This tribe believes that you must embrace death and live in filth. Often found living near cremation sites, they bathe in the ashes of the fallen and make jewelry out of the dead bones. Observe the strange behavior of the woman on this elevator. Is someone following her? Is she okay? Is she on drugs? This video just seems unnatural. Three weeks later, the body of a Chinese-Canadian tourist Elisa Lam was found in a 1,000 gallon cistern atop the stay on Main Hotel in downtown Los Angeles. This is. was. Elisa Lam. So, why is this on a cannibal iceberg? It has to do with how the body was found. Many guests staying at the hotel report having low water pressure, others report having black color in the water. This last report just makes me feel horrified. Many report. The strange taste coming from their faucets and water fountains. This taste was the decaying body of Elisa Lamb. Guests had been bathing and drinking the decrepit remains of a Chinese woman. So if humans taste like pork, does that mean she tastes like sweet and sour pork? Alfred Packer, also known as the Colorado Cannibal. Ugh, I want a cool nickname like that. Alfred Packer was a self-proclaimed wilderness expert and guide. 
he could show you around the forest. He led an expedition through the San Juan Mountains along with five other men. From here the story gets blurry. Alfred somehow was the only man to make it back. Oh Alfred, what happened on that mountain? I was abandoned. No, that doesn't sound right. Uh, people started dying and it was cold and we were hungry so uh, someone suggested that we eat the- I feel like there's more Alfred. Fine, uh, one of them turned on us and I was the sole survivor. And I killed him before he could kill me. That, you know, th then, then I, I ate everyone because I thought I was- Closer, Alfred. Fine, I, I killed everyone and ate them. And then Alfred was sentenced to death. But he escaped, evaded the law for nine years, and then eventually was captured, won a retrial, and spent 40 years in prison. I guess it all worked out in the end, huh? The donor party was a group of American pioneers who migrated in a wagon from the Midwest to California. Several mishaps along the way caused delays that forced the group to stick out the heavy winter of 1846 in the Sierra Nevada mountains. And of course how all these tales seemed to go, it got rough and many died from starvation and sickness. The ones who starved it out had a conscience because they didn't think to eat any of the others. But the others said, nah, that ain't gonna be me. And they ate the dead. Of the original 87 members on this voyage, 48 survived. Those are still better odds than those going on an expedition with Alfred. Michael Rockefeller was the great-grandson of the great John D. Rockefeller. This man was rich, had a rich lineage. He decided he wanted to go exploring the Asmat region of the southwestern Netherlands, New Guinea. So he was on a boat with some French guy named René Wassing. Their vessel somehow overturned and Rockefeller was presumed to have been drowned when he attempted to swim to shore. Funny story, shortly after he swam away, Rene was found by a search party. There's much speculation on what happened to Mr. Rockefeller. If Rockefeller somehow did manage to make the 14 mile swim to shore, he would have been met by a headhunter tribe on the island and cooked and eaten. Probably as revenge from the locals given they were pillaged by the Dutch soldiers years ago. At least that's what they say happened. But this picture may say otherwise. Is this Michael? Maybe. Michael is still alive. Countess Bathory Elizabeth Bathory was a Hungarian noblewoman who owned many a land. What she did with this land, you ask? Well, her and her four servants casually, as you do, kidnapped hundreds of young girls and women, torturing mutilating and eventually killing them her servants were tried and convicted and what was the sentence for miss countess elizabeth noblewoman duchess of cambridge Habsburg, princess Fe they put this chick on house arrest the cannibal part of this story is that she was accused of bathing in the blood of her victims and drinking to become younger and immortal sounds like what they're doing in hollywood and the Clintons. Jeffrey Dahmer. Serial killer, sex offender, necrophiliac, and finally... An unassuming chocolate factory worker. One of the most infamous serial killers in recent times, Jeffrey Dahmer had many sexual frustrations, considering he was gay and he often was attracted to men that were just not interested. His first murder involved a hitchhiker named Stephen Hicks. After hours of talking, drinking, and listening to music, Dahmer wanted more. But he knew Stephen wouldn't go for it. He didn't want his new man to leave. So as Stephen's back was turned, Dahmer bludgeoned him in the back of the head with a 10 pound dumbbell. Dahmer then strangles the man and explores his chest area. He touches himself over the dead body and then cuts it up and buries him and later unearths him and melts the remains in acid. Then he joins the military, later being discharged Dahmer starts killing people again nine years after his first initial murder and began eating the organs and flesh of his victims. He continued until 1991. He was eventually captured when one of his victims escaped from his apartment after Dahmer promised to cut out his heart and eat it. The man escaped and flagged down Milwaukee police, which proceeded to take him back to the apartment of Dahmer. The very apartment that he was just captured, handcuffed, 
and his life was threatened, the cops took him back to that very apartment. This was to retrieve the keys to the handcuffs placed on the man. Dahmer played it off as if it was just some sick role play they were having. One of the officers discovered photographs of dismembered bodies staged in the very apartment that they were in. And then they subdued Dahmer. Jeffrey Dahmer served two years in prison. His sentence was 15 life sentences. He was charged with this but then ended up being beaten to death by a fellow inmate. Hansel and Gretel does not need much explanation. A detestable witch who ultimately wanted to cook and eat two lost children. The goal slash moral of the story in the lesson to never trust strangers. Especially with a child sized stew pot. Long pig. Long pig is a culinary term for those that dabble in the human cuisine. A chef's term since the taste of flesh allegedly resembles that of pork. Ted Bundy. Another well-known serial killer was known for being charming and living a completely normal life, which made him unsuspecting and dangerous. The only thing cannibalistic I could find was the fact that he would bite his victims hard enough to detach skin, and along with spending the night with his dead victims, he would behead, then place makeup on them and wash their hair, keeping the heads looking good. A Wendigo is based in First Nations Canadian folklore as an evil spirit with human-like features that possess human to become cannibalistic and causes people to have insatiable greed and hunger. And it's also this guy. You should definitely check out his channel. The From Hell Letter, also known as the Lusk Letter, was a letter sent alongside half a preserved human kidney to the chairman of Whitechapel Vigilance Committee. The author of this letter claimed to be the unidentified serial killer known as Jack the Ripper, who had murdered and mutilated at least four women in the Whitechapel and Spitalfields district of London in the two months prior to Luss receiving this letter. The letter was postmarked on 15 October 1888 and was received by Lust the following day. An examination of the kidney revealed the individual from whom the organ originated had suffered from Bright's disease. The author of the letter also claimed to have fried and eaten the other half of the kidney. Soylent Green, a tale of earth in despair in 2022. Natural food like fruits, vegetables, and meat among others are now extinct. Earth is overpopulated and New York City has 40 million starving, poverty-stricken people. The only way they survive is with water rations and eating a mysterious food called Soylent. A detective investigates the murder of the president of the Soylent Company. The truth he uncovers is more disturbing than the earth in turmoil when he learns the secret ingredient of Soylent Green. This is a huge spoiler in the movie, so if you haven't seen it, I'm warning you right now. Soylent Green, originally in the movie, is made from sea plankton. And once the oceans become overrun, and over polluted the soylent company begins using human bodies they begin grinding up humans prisoners old folks anything that is dying anyone who has recently passed away it's fucked up kuru kuru is a rare and fatal brain disorder that occurred at epidemic levels during the 1950s and 60s among the four people in the highlands of New Guinea. The disease was the result of the practice of ritualistic cannibalism among the four tribes, in which relatives prepared and consumed the tissues including brains of the deceased. Miracle in the Andes A Uruguayan rugby team was on the way to Chile for the exhibition game when the plane they were using caught a horrible turbulence above the Andes mountain. One of the passengers recalled asking his friend if flying that close was normal. Soon after, everything went black. The plane had crashed into the side of the mountain. 72 days later, the wreckage was found. Seven had been sucked out of the fuselage before landing, and four had died on impact, including the pilot. Five died after impact. 29 were left and 16 were left by the time they were found. Some froze, others starved, many succumbed to injury. Those who survived did so by turning to eating their fellow teammates. It's called a miracle because of the fact that the passengers thought to eat the dead. Instead of starving, if not for this, they would all be dead. Kinda effed up. Ed Gein's store was more pop culture than many. He's most known for being body snatcher and a murderer. He'd often exhume bodies from the local graveyard 
and fashion bodysuits and trophies from the skin and bones, eventually killing two women doing the same, which inspired characters such as Leatherface and Texas Chainsaw Massacre, the classic film Psycho, House of a Thousand Corpses by director Rob Zombie, and Buffalo Bill in Silence of the Lambs. Ed Gein himself was not a cannibal. Mainly I think this refers to Buffalo Bill in the Silence of the Lambs, which has a cannibal character, Hannibal Lecter. Levi Boonhelm was similar to Alfred Packer, who was an Old West gunman. He often paraded around the fact that he was eating people for survival situations, but there were many documented, unprovoked instances of this Kentucky cowboy having the insatiable flesh palate. Many of the poor devil I killed at one time or another, and the time that had been, I've been obliged to feed on some of them. He bragged to his gang of misfits after escaping the insane asylum. Later, he was executed. Before his execution, he accused his friend and partner in crime, Jack Gallagher, of crimes he himself committed. Upon the execution of Jack, Levi said, Kick away, old fella. My turn next. I'll be in hell with you in a minute. Franklin's lost expedition was a British voyage of Arctic exploration led by Captain Sir John Franklin that departed from England in 1845 aboard two ships, the HMS Erebus and the HMS Terror. They were assigned to traverse the last unnavigated sections of the Northwest Passage in the Canadian Arctic and to record magnetic data to help determine whether a better understanding could aid navigation. The expedition met with disaster. After both ships and their crews, a total of 129 officers and men became icebound to Victoria Strait near King William Island. After being icebound for more than a year, Erebus and Terror were abandoned in April 1848 by which point Franklin and nearly two dozen others had died. The survivors now led by Franklin, second in command, Francis Crozier, and Erebus's captain, James Fitz James, that's a funny ass name, set out for the Canadian mainland and disappeared. Pressed by Franklin's wife, Jane, and others, the Admiralty launched a search for the missing expedition in 1948. In the many subsequent searches, in the decades afterwards, several relics from the expedition were uncovered, including the remains of two men that were returned to Britain. A series of scientific studies in modern times suggests that the men of the expedition did not all die quickly. Hypothermia, starvation, lead poisoning, or zinc deficiency, and diseases including scurvy along with general exposure to hostile environment while lacking adequate clothes and nutrition killed everyone on the expedition in the years after it was last sighted by Europeans in 1845. Cut marks on some of the bones recovering during these studies also supported allegations of cannibalism reported by Franklin searcher John Ray in 1854. And that is the end of Tier 1. <sighs> Not a bad start, but this was just the beginning. It is only going to get more insane and awful from here. So make sure you stay tuned as I will be making videos on each part. If you want to check out some of the other icebergs I have on my channel, I am currently going through two other icebergs. Definitely go check out those videos, show those some support and check out other videos on my channel. I hope you guys are having a good day. I look forward to continuing this iceberg. This is one of the most comprehensive and intense icebergs I have seen put together. Thank you guys for watching and I will see you on the next video.